Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Middleby Residential Virtual Training Series. Today's focus is Viking Electric Oven Cavities. I am your moderator, Margaret McSweeney, and I would like to welcome you to this training series today. A few housekeeping items. First of all, could you please remain on mute during the call? Also, if you have questions, please utilize the chat function to ask questions during the training. All questions will be answered at the end of the training presentation. For your information, we will be recording this training session and you will have access to this after the session. I'd like to introduce you, first of all, to Sue Bailey. She is the director of Go-To Market Strategy at Viking Range. Also, please meet Jackie Rothbaum, who is the executive chef and brand ambassador from Middleby Residential's New York showroom. And also, executive chef Jamie Larita, who is the brand ambassador from Middleby Residential's Chicago showroom. room here in the merchandise mark a couple of news tidbits we are virtual so if anybody out there wants to make a virtual appointment to see any viking appliance you can create that virtual appointment and i will gladly arrange um, the right people to get on that call um, we are here today to talk about one of my favorite products um, and some of my favorite products from viking and that is our amazing wall ovens um, as far as a, a story that I tell here in the showroom, that when customers are coming in, it really helps to tell the Middleby story. And as you guys know, Viking was acquired uh, by the Middleby Corporation, and the Middleby Corporation owns lots of different brands. Uh, every uh, so often you hear of a new, a new brand that we've acquired. Um, one of the brands that I'm very familiar with as a chef is Blodgett. Blodgett makes an amazing French door oven for the commercial side of the business. So when customers and consumers come into our showrooms, it's a really great way to tell the Middleby Viking story. The French door oven has patented parts and pieces that come from uh, the commercial side. And I'd like to say that I'm very proud that when I'm standing in front of the residential of it, it really feels like I'm back in the commercial kitchen. And speaking of stories, I have a recipe for you guys today. Those of you who don't know, I travel the world with lots of very famous musicians like Sting, uh, Steven Tyler and Aerosmith, Kiss, Josh Groban, Barry Manilow, all the different genres of music. This recipe that I'm gonna share with you guys at the end of the video, comes from a time way back when I trained in Italy. I was a graduate of the Culinary Institute, and then I learned this dish on my stage period as I traveled through Italy. So today I have behind me our French door oven, and I'm setting it to, um, I'm setting it to convection roast. And I'm gonna pull out right now this chicken dish. Now this chicken dish is called grandma's chicken. This was a grandmother, speaking of stories, that used to cook for me when I used to come home from the Italian restaurant that I worked at. She lived in my building and every Sunday morning she would make me this chicken dish because she would make it for her husband that he thought I should learn this dish. So I'm gonna share this very special recipe with you guys. But for now, I'm going to put it back into my oven. And I'm going to continue cooking it on convection roast at about 350 degrees to finish it off. So now we're going to go over to our collection of wall ovens. And we are going to introduce you to the inside cavity of our French door oven. Take it away, Sue Bailey. 
Thanks, Jamie. Hey guys, it's good to know that everybody's on here. It's kind of fun to look through the participants list and most of you are not as old as I am, but it reminds me of Mr. Rogers to go, oh, I see Melissa. Oh, I see Vaughn. Oh, I see Nanette. So it's thank you guys for taking time out of your day to join us. Hopefully you'll um, enjoy this as much as we enjoy presenting it to you guys. But Jamie's right. We are going to talk about electric oven cavities from Viking. Now, as you guys know, there's really three types of, of cooks in the world, okay? Jamie and Jackie might disagree with me, but there's three. There's those of you like Jamie and Jackie who either can cook or love to cook. Then there's a second group that either can't cook or doesn't like it. Then there's a third group, which I hang out in, which I can cook, I choose not to, okay? So, but having said all that, the great thing I love about the Viking appliances is it makes me a better cook, it really does. So we are going to focus on ovens. Now, as you guys all know, there's basically two types of oven cavities, a gas oven cavity and an electric oven cavity. We are only gonna focus on the electric oven cavity, which is what you see on the screen right now. Here's the good news. Even though you guys are looking at a 30 inch Viking French store oven, all of our oven cavities that are electric are the same, okay? So this 30 inch oven cavity in the French store oven is the same as the one that's in the VSVDOE. It's the same that's in the VDR ranges or the induction ranges or the electric ranges. So guys, once you know the information we're gonna tell you today, you know everything about every five and seven series electric oven cavity that we have. So that's the great news about that as we jump into it. Jamie, anything you wanna add before I get started on this? No, that sounds great. That's really good information that, um, you know, I had to learn that you know, all the cavities are the same. So that makes it easy. Thanks, Sue. Good, okay, so the first thing that it's great to see that Jamie has none of the racks in there is the extra large oven cavities that we have, guys. It is so large lots of usable space. Um, in a 30 inch oven, it's a 4.7 cubic foot oven overall, 4.1 if you go to AHAM measurements. 36 guys is a 5.6 cubic foot oven if you go to that 36 inch range. So lots and lots of space within the oven. Jamie's showing us how easily large pans will fit in there. The other thing I love about that oven cavity you can see so well is there are six rack positions, okay? And we're gonna get into some rack positions when we talk about broiling and some of that. But the fact that you have six different rack positions that you can put the oven racks onto give you a lot of versatility in where food is placed in the oven. First thing I want you to notice is the bottom is the concealed 10 pass dual bake element, okay? Dual bake, meaning that there's actually two rows of elements in there, the inside and the outside, okay? We utilize them both in all of our functions that we have. The other thing that's great about this is it is concealed. So what does that mean? No worries about anything going anywhere else in the oven. Everything is contained right there, which makes it very easy to clean when we get into the self-clean or the steam clean, which we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. All right, so here's what I wanna spend most of our time on today, and that is the performance cooking modes that we have, because Viking is truly all about performance, all right? So you can see it on the knob there. We're gonna kinda of go through each and every single one of these as we go. We're gonna start with bake. And what we're gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna give you kind of the technical or how it works, and then we're gonna throw it over to Jamie and Jackie to give you guys the types of foods that cook best on that particular mode that we are talking about. So you'll see us throw it back and forth a little bit here. So the first one, which just about every oven's gonna have is gonna be a bake, okay? Remember, I just mentioned it. Ours is a dual element bake, okay? On the bake setting, you get full power from that dual element down below that we looked at just a minute ago. And then you get supplemental heat from the broil element up above. Okay, so you're getting it from both sides. Very, very light from the broil element, but it is helping to really make the oven cavity very even as it comes to that. Now, bake is recommended for single rack baking, okay? Now, a lot of cookbooks, and Jamie, I'll let you speak a little bit more to this, but a lot of times recipes are done 
assuming the customer is going to use just a conventional bake. Is that right, Jamie? That is right, Sue. And convectional baking and roasting is really particularly suitable for dishes that require basically a high temperature. So you want to use this setting for baking, roasting, casseroles, breads, cakes, cookies, pastry pies, entrees, and vegetables. Jackie, anything else you want to add on bake? Do we have Jackie? Okay, so Chef Jackie um, uh, obviously is having a, maybe some technical difficulties, but breads, cakes, cookies, pies, I mentioned a lot of the things that um, would be uh, uh, doable on bake. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay, I was talking, but so sorry. Okay, I figured it out. Um, yeah, some of the things I love to do on bake, and what I was going to say, Jamie, is that um, a lot of people get confused and they always go to like that fan bake. And when you're doing cookies or you're doing pies, um, that extra airflow really adds um, a lot more heat to what we're cooking, which I'm sure Sue will touch upon. So when recipes are calling for just bake, it's really good to, to use this particular setting so that you're not, you're getting that solid heat and that solid bake. And I think it's really perfect for cookies and pastries. That's like ideal. Exactly. Excellent. So let's go on and talk through convection because guys, this is where we as Vikings spent a lot of our engineering time when we developed this particular oven cavity. And I was part of that team that worked on this um, oven cavity. And what we really wanted the ability to do was we wanted the best convection system on the market because that is really where you can perform and do a lot of your cooking. Now, the major benefit of convection baking is the ability to prepare food in quantity by using multiple racks. That's what you're going to find in a gas oven. A gas oven is a great job for a single rack baking, but you try to multiple rack bake in a gas oven and you're not going to get as consistent results as you will if you use a convection oven. Now, the Viking, this is a patented meaning guys, you can't get it anywhere but with us. We have the patent rights on this. It's a very speed dual flow convection system. Let me tell you why it's called that. We worked for probably 18 to 24 months on this particular convection system, getting it to perform well on all these different functions that we knew our customers were gonna wanna use. And the name tells it all, very speed because that fan which is an eight and a half inch fan, the largest in the industry, that fan runs at two different speeds, depending on which convection cycle we're on. We'll talk about in just a minute. So very speed for the two speeds, dual flow, because the fan alternates direction every 60 seconds. So it's gonna turn in one direction for 60 seconds, just like that, it's gonna stop, and it's gonna turn in the other direction for 60 seconds. So that's why it's called very speed dual flow because we have those things working together. What you will see is some competitors choose to use two fans working in opposite directions to do the same thing that we're doing here. Guys, we tried two fans, we tried different sizes fans, we tried everything as we were putting this together and found that that eight and a half inch fan that works in two directions at two different speeds really was able to get heat evenly across that entire oven cavity, which is so important to us. This, the even circulation of the air equalizes that temperature, so it eliminates any hot or cold spots that you tend to find in a conventional oven. And with this heating method, foods can be baked and roasted at the same time with minimal trace taste transfer. So that's what's real important, guys. If we use, and we'll talk about it in a minute, true convect, if I want to put some croissants and some croissant and a meat in there together, say a lasagna, I can cook them all on different racks and I won't have any flavor transfer because of the utilization of this system that we have in there. Let's start with the convection bake. Jamie, we're going to start there. In convection bake, what's going to happen there is we are going to that bottom element operates in full power, just like we talked about on conventional bake. We get a little bit of supplemental heat from the top broiler, and then that eight and a half inch fan that Jamie showed a minute ago is circulated in the rear, providing more even heat distribution. 
Jamie, you want to tell them where this is good? Yeah, for sure. I mean, ideally the hot air system is especially economical when you're thawing frozen foods, Sue. Um, you want to use this setting for baking and roasting, multi-rack baking, and for heavier frozen foods like, you know, frozen pies, pizzas, and those like takeaway frozen dinners that you see in the supermarket. Jackie, what can you tell us about convection baking as far as like real food in the oven? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so one of the main things I've made in the showrooms for some of our parties is actually um, these really good pigs in a blanket, but they're homemade. So you take puff pastry and uh, kielbasa or, or an andouille sausage, whatever you guys have, and you cut it up, wrap it. Um, but I, what I like to do to get, get ahead for the parties is to put them in the freezer. So I would literally be reheating, you know, eggplant parm bites and also have these pigs in a blanket that are frozen go into a 400 degree oven and it's, it's cooking at the same time, no flavor transfer or anything like that. So that's really a great feature. Perfect. Great. That moves us on to the true convec, which Linda just asked a question in the chat I saw pop up, is on true convec, the, their, no, the rear element that's around the fan is the only thing that is on. So remember, we have the dual element down below, we have the broiler up top and then right there, which you can't see until Jamie put it up in front of you, is the heating element that is used on True Convect, all right? So on True Convect, your heat comes completely from that element that Jamie just showed you, utilizing the eight and a half inch fan blades that we have in there, okay? So remember that, that reversible fan goes two ways, 60 seconds one, 60 seconds the other, um, to get, very even heating. Guys, this is why on True Convect, if we wanted to cook six racks of cookies, we can cook six racks of cookies and they will all come out almost identical from that. This function is really good. You can single rack bake, but mostly for multiple rack baking, like I said earlier, the preparation of complete meals where you're going to have foods that might transfer odor. It will not transfer odor using this. And this setting is also recommended for, like I just said, baking large quantity of baked goods. As I told you guys, I can cook. I choose not to. It's nothing I love to do. So when the girls were younger and, you know, I needed to make 72 cookies or I needed to do three pies, this was kind of the, my go-to mode. Jamie, what about you? Yes, for sure. I mean, I, I like to use this setting for foods that require more gentle cooking soups, such as like more like pastries, souffles, yeasted breads, quick breads and cakes. Um, breads, cookies, and other baked goods come out evenly textured with golden crusts on this mode. No special bakeware is required. Multi-rack baking for breads, cakes, and cookies. And I like, you know, utilizing all six racks at once. So really quickly, Jackie, on that one, what would you throw in there? Um, probably a sponge cake. So, you know, something similar to a souffle has egg whites needs to rise low and slow type heat. Um, that's exactly what I would do. Perfect. And we're going to move right. on to convection roast there, Sue. Yep. And, and in this one, the convection element runs in conjunction with the inner and outer broil elements. Okay. One thing to notice here is that this is one of the two functions where the convection fan actually runs at the very high speed is at a higher RPM than for the other two convection modes, um, which is very important because what this allows for is for the cool air to be quickly replaced, which allows the meat to sear on the outside while maintaining the juices um, and very little shrinkage of the meat. A time saving is also gained over using existed single fan convection roast modes when you use this one. Now guys, I'll tell you honestly, I'm not as much of a meat person here, but Jamie, I know you are. So you want to talk a little bit about the roast? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, no, I'll never forget when I first used the oven soup um, with a whole turkey, whole chickens and hams. I mean, that's when you're going in big, right? You want to use that mode when you got the, 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 big, the yeah. big game in there. What about you, Jackie? So one of my go-tos is actually searing my meat. Um, so say it's a short rib searing in the oven on, on this setting, on convection roast, olive oil, salt, pepper, put it in there, really high heat for a short amount of time instead of dirtying up your cooktop. All right. Good. So guys, we've covered bake, which is the regular, 
We've got your three convection, which is convection bake, true convect, and convection roast. And now, we're, thank you, Jamie, we're moving on to broil. Leave that right there, Jamie. So we're gonna talk about broil. Now, one thing I do have to tell you here is that if it's a seven series product, be it a range or the French door oven, this fabulous glass enclosed broiler that Jamie has is showing you is in all seven series product, okay? You've got an inner and an outer ribbon, um, both which get very hot, do a great job of searing. This one is probably the closest to a gas broiler. Any of you that have ever been to Greenwood or you've seen Bryant do his, we can, we have broiled straight steaks with the glass enclosed, with the tubular broiler of the five series and with the gas. And it's hard for people to tell the difference um, when you put them side by side. So seven series gets the glass enclosed broiler. Five series gets just the, the tubular broiler with the heat shield. Again, no slacker at all, but there is a step up feature when you go to the seven series with that. There's also basically four different broil settings that are possible within these oven cavities, okay? The first one is there's high broil, there's medium broil, there's low broil, and then there is a convection broil. Now, what a perfect there, Jamie, because here's what I want you to notice. This French door, because it has the steam clean, it does not have the medium broil, okay? But on the ovens that don't have a steam clean, you will have the medium broil. So in order to decide which features we wanted on which ovens, we had to take away a broil here or there, and that's what you'll notice. So not every oven has all four of the broils, but it will have at least two to three of the broils, all right? So let's talk about real quick, Jamie, if you'll just pull that um, glass enclosed broiler back out for me, it's a great way for us to kind of look at that. So on high broil, you're gonna have um, heat from all of those. And if this was a regular tubular broiler, like in the five series, it's a 10 pass, all of them would be on for the high broil. Um, for This is for the foods that you know you kind of want to fast broil, foods that maybe as close as two inches from the broil element. And this is best for meats that are rare to medium when you're wanting them kind of like that. I'm going to do all the broils and throw it to you guys. On the medium broil, this is when it utilizes the whole broil element, but it's actually going to pulse off and on. It's not going to be on for one continuous time like it is on high broil. This allows about four inches between the top surface of the food and the broil element for a more, what I call a slow broil. This is best for like chicken or ham, food that you wanna broil without over browning um, from there. And then the low broil, this mode uses only a fraction of the available broil power that you have for delicate top uh, browning. The, and on the seven series one, it's only the inner broil element that is used part-time, not the whole broil element that you have on there. The other broil that we have is convection broil. You guys have been paying attention, you know what that means is. We're operating the broil at full power and what are we added to it? We've added the eight and a half inch fan behind there. This function is exactly like regular broil with the benefit of the added circulation there. Just so you know, broiling is a very, um, one of the modes that really will create some smoke and smoke is reduced since the airflow is also reduced with the peak temperatures of the food. So we do get rid of the smoke with a smoke eliminator um, in there. So Jamie, Jackie, y'all want to talk about your favorite broil settings? Yeah, I, I would say that I like to use the setting, um, you know, the high broil for really my small and average cuts of meat. You know, my high broil I use for my dark meats, like one inch thickness, maybe a little bit less. Um, when rare or medium rare is, uh, you know, my desired. And then one more on low broil, I use this setting, you know, when, it, when I want to do something gentle, like, uh, you know, to brown a meringue. What about you, Jackie? Yeah, so I love to use like a convection broil. I just actually made these really good Asian sticky Thai ribs. Um, and so I like to finish them in the oven on convection broil, get them really crispy and caramelize them. Um, and then for like a low medium broil, I love to do eggs in the oven. Um, oh, so yeah. a frittata is really, really nice to do um, in the oven from start to finish. Very good. Exactly. Um, there's a couple of more settings which I don't think are necessarily, well, two of them are on the dial. Let's talk about cleaning these ovens. 
Um, we've got a self clean on the bottom oven of that French door and we've got a steam clean. The reason that the French door has the steam clean is because of course that top oven, based on the way those doors and that mechanism is, do not latch shut that we, as we need them to do for self clean. So this steam clean feature is great. It's, it's for light cleaning of the oven. All you have to do is take an oven safe pan, put about two cups of water um, in that oven safe pan, turn the function to steam clean, uh, turn the temperature control to clean. And this is gonna bring the temperature to about 225 degrees for about 20 minutes, okay? It's gonna just really moisten up the inside of that oven. It is gonna make everything very easy to wipe off. Here's what I love about this though, okay? So let's say you have a VDR range or one of the electric ranges or even um, one of the other ovens that doesn't have steam clean. You can still do a steam clean. All you have to do is get that oven safe pan, two cups of water, turn the oven function to bake, turn the temperature to 225, leave it in there for 20 minutes, and voila, you have a steam clean in any oven that you did not wanna to have to do a big self clean in. Now self clean is the other thing that all of our ovens have with the exception of the top of the French door. And here's what's funny, if you guys think about yourselves. Research shows that customers self clean their ovens 1.27 times a year, okay? I'm that customer who doesn't clean it ever, all right? And as you ask anybody who's on the call center, they'll tell you everybody self cleans their ovens the week before Thanksgiving. That's just when they decide to self clean their oven. Guys, we use a great self cleaning cycle that eliminates the need for, you know, um, scrubbing or scouring anything. During this cycle, that temperature is gonna reach a pretty high temp. And what it's basically gonna do is that smoke eliminator inside reduces the odor that's associated with the burn off that happens. And what you're left with after you run the self clean cycle is a powder ash residue that you just wipe out of the oven. So very, very easy to use either the steam clean or the self clean. One thing I did or I have learned over my many years of being here, if you have birds or small pets that maybe have a compromised, um, uh, respiratory system, they need to be taken out of the room when you're self cleaning because it does emit a little bit of that. We actually put it in our use and care um, just to make sure that everybody is safe when it comes to self cleaning. Uh, a couple of other ones I want to hit real quickly. We do have convection dehydrate and convection defrost. They are not settings on the knob, but the use and care manual does tell you how to do that. There are some people who like to make their own beef jerky. So convection dehydrate is a really good thing with that. Uh, convection defrost, just, you know, my, I can remember my mother leaving the meat sitting out all day long on the counter for it to thaw. Um, we don't do that anymore. So the convection defrost is great for that. The other one that I love, love, love is proof. And I say I love, love, love it, not because I bake bread, but because I know Jamie bakes bread and bakes some wonderful bread. Jamie, you want to tell them a little bit about that proof and why you use it? Yeah, it's the same thing as like, you know, if you were to leave your bread on the counter, your dough on the counter and wait for it to proof, you know, you want to have the right temperature to do that. This oven provides you with that perfect temperature to proof your bread. So I do bake a huge amount of sourdough bread. And this is one of the, uh, my favorite functions when I'm looking for that perfect proof environment, Sue, to get my dough proofed perfectly. Exactly, which is gay. One thing you can see also um, in the shot that we have of the oven there is the meat probe. You guys have to remember, I am one of those people who can cook and choose not to, um, but I love a meat probe because I just put it into my chicken. I just put it into my meat. I tell it what temperature I want it to be at. And when it hits that internal temperature, it lets me know and then my oven's done. And it is so very simple to have it. So the wall ovens, the Premier and the French door, all have the meat probe option in the upper ovens. Uh, none of the ranges do have meat probes at this point. One of the other questions that um, customers do ask a lot is, how long does it take to preheat? Um, and the answer for us with the Viking Rapid Ready preheat system is if you're going bake 350, you're between nine and 10 minutes to get to the full preheat. Um, now, that's gonna really depend on which um, function you are gonna use as far as how long the preheat takes, okay? Because like I said, bake 350, 
nine to 10 minutes. But if you're gonna be baking multiple racks and you're gonna be using True Convect, you need to preheat the oven on True Convect to make sure that we've got it exactly where we want it to be. But that's gonna take just a little bit longer because remember, you're using only that back element on True Convect. One of the other things that customers sometimes learn the hard way is with the Rapid Ready Preheat, we utilize not only the bottom um, element, but also the broiler. So you don't wanna put food in if you are preheating the oven because it is gonna use the broiler for supplemental heat and that's gonna make your food not turn out exactly the way you want. Also remember, sometimes a customer says, oh, you know, my preheat seems to take longer than it should. There are external factors such as room temperature, are they getting a full 240 to the unit that can cause the preheat times to be a little longer than we anticipated. The other thing I wanna talk about, then I think I might be done, is the no preheat option. Any of you guys that are like me, I don't like to waste time, which is why I have an induction cooktop. I don't like to have to preheat the oven. So I love this no preheat option. What you can do on all our electric oven cavities is you turn it to convection bake, not true convect, not regular bake, convection bake. And then I put it on my whatever temperature, let's say it's 350. And I can go ahead and put whatever I am cooking in the oven, okay? And I can just let it go. It will cook for the same amount of time that normally it would. I don't have to worry about it because remember, convection bake is not utilizing the, um, the rapid ready preheat. So it brings the temperature up pretty quick, but not so much so that you're gonna have it overdone. I did not believe them um, when Tina Sheffield, who's our um, engineering uh, home economist said, hey, we can cook without preheating. I'm like, no way. I tried cookies. I tried French fries. I tried lasagna. I tried everything to prove to them that it doesn't work. And I was totally wrong. You can do no preheat on anything you want as long as it is a single rack piece and it's, it has to cook for less than 45 minutes. You're going to be fine. No need to do your meats and things like that in this. And I think guys, oh, I forgot. Yes, thank you, Jamie. Tell them about the True Glide Rack, Jamie. Yeah, so one of the greatest things about the oven and what customers love the most is the fact that we have this really, really nice, easy True Glide Rack. These things are really easy to clean, really easy to take in and out of the oven. And it's really, really nice because, um, you know, somebody like me that, you know, usually has a heavy bird or something, it can really take a lot of weight. So that's one of the one of the things I love most about the ovens. So that's one of the great features of the oven. And then I want to talk to you guys about one of the last things, which is the new colors from Viking. The ovens come in stainless steel. And we also have, for example, um, this oven in, uh, are we featuring the slide? So the slide can show you all the new colors um, from Viking. We've got the Delta Hue. So Viking just released 14 new beautiful colors. Um, again, colors that people have never seen before. Designers love them because there's so many different ways to design them into the perfect environment. So thank you for showing that slide. And here in my kitchen, we have the French door oven in Pacific Gray. So um, that ends our Sue, thank you so much for that amazing, amazing uh, training. Now I'm gonna pull out my oven. And if you see, guys, really quickly, the way this operates, if you see the fan in the oven, you can see that the fan will operate in one direction. Now it's a little loud with the doors open. It'll stop and then it'll change direction. So that's the beauty of this oven, is that it will stop and then change direction. So this is the oven in the Pacific gray color. So here is the finish of Grandma's Chicken, guys. And thank you so much for tuning in. This is a wonderful recipe that you can easily, easily impress your friends with. And uh, you can create you know, a gourmet meal in this beautiful convection oven and serve that with some of that crusty bread that Sue talked about. 
And thank you so much. And we're going to throw it back to our moderator, Margaret McSweeney. Thank you so much, Jamie. Sue, was there anything you would like to add about the warranty highlights? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so as with uh, the majority of the Viking products, we get a two year full on the complete unit, be it a range or a built in oven or whatever it might be. And then a five year limited on any tubular or electric element. So it's got a really good warranty. Terrific. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Please make sure to catch Chef Jackie and Chef Jamie on the Viking Instagram live feed for an amazing cook video on Wednesday and Friday evenings. Please also make sure to tune in for next week's Viking training. It's next Thursday, May 21st at 3 p.m. Central Time. Look for a follow-up email with assets from today's training as well as Chef Jamie's grandma chicken recipe. So this concludes our training today. We will remain on the call to answer any questions that you may have asked in the chat. And I know there were some questions uh, that came up, but thank you so much everyone for attending. Thanks guys. Yes, so we do have a few questions. Um, Vaughn Hobbs asked, do we have to put a pan in or can we just put ice in the bottom of the oven cavity? Sue, what do you recommend? Vaughn, I really do like it in a pan. Um, I, although we have tested it with um, you know, water or something else being down there, that is a concealed element. I'm just one of those that, you know, I don't want to have to um, wipe up anything extra. So like we have tested it that way. I prefer it in a pan, but that's probably just me, Vaughn. It, it won't hurt it to do it the other way. Wonderful. Maria asks, does the oven shut off when the probe hits temperature or does it ring an alarm? And, you know, I'm going to check on that because used to we had it where it did turn the oven off, but I don't know that it does anymore. So let me answer that question when I confirm with engineering when we send the email out. Wonderful. Um, and then Nancy says, thank you very much. I have a question. How do we set the roast probe temperature? So when you, it's all in the use and care manual. I won't take the time to go through it, but if you go in the use and care manual, it tells you what to do and what to turn once you've plugged the, once you've plugged that um, meat probe in, it's then going to, there's a few things you have to do there. So my best answer to that without it making sense since I'm not in front of it is to just look in the use and care manual. I think it's page 22. And I think it tells you how to use the meat probe. Wonderful. And are there any other questions? You have a moment to just type in your question in the chat box. Uh, Tom Dufresne asks, does the fan element come on with convection broil? Does, no. So Tom, that's just using the fan. The only one that uses the, the um, what do you call it? The element behind, around the fan is the true convect. So convection broil is using the broiler and the fan, but not the element around the fan, if that makes sense. Wonderful. Well, I think this concludes the questions. Uh, such a very informative training. Thank you so much, Sue and, and Jackie. Please know that you will get a follow-up email later today with this recording, along with a recipe from Chef Jane Lurita and uh, information about upcoming training. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye guys, thanks Margaret, thanks Jamie and Jackie. Stay safe, everyone. Stay safe, everyone, thank you.